In 2016, Visa held 50.6% of the credit card market share and 70.3% of the debit card market share. Today, they have 1.46 billion Visa cards in circulation, generating over $4.3 million in sales in over 160 countries every single year. But how did Visa even get into this business and grow to become the market leader? Stick around till the end to find out. Welcome to Hari Sabis. So it all started with Bank of America wanting to launch a consumer credit card with the maximum credit limit of $300. This credit card was aimed at middle class people and small merchants. And as a result, Bank of America started the Bank of America card program in 1958. At first, Bank of America's plan was to keep this program exclusive to the state of California. But starting in 1965, Bank of America started licensing Bank of America card to several other banks outside of California. In the late 1960s, DeHawk, the leader of a group of licensee banks, suggested the creation of an association. He suggested that this association should be a joint venture so that each member could take advantage of centralized payments while also having an even playing field. Soon enough, in 1970, DeHawk became the first president of the National Bank of America Card, Inc., or MBI. This was right after Bank of America passed control of Bank of America Card to issue banks who comprised the National Bank of America Card, Inc. NBI became an independent, non-stock company who managed, promoted, and developed Bank of America Card systems in the United States. While Bank of America gave control of Bank of America Card over to the MBI, they didn't cut all ties with Bank of America Card. Bank of America still had the power to issue international licenses, and that's exactly what they did. In 1972, they granted 15 countries international licenses. In 1974, a multinational corporation was established called Ibanco. This corporation managed the Global Bank of America card program. In 1976, the directors of Ibanco united the several international networks into one single global network. However, there was one issue. Many countries were hesitant in issuing Bank of America cards, even though there was very small ties with the bank. To eliminate this issue, DeHawk suggested naming the company Visa, which is recognized and accepted around the world. Visa stands for Visa International Service Association, and what's cool about the name is that it's pronounced the same way in every single language. And this marks the formal birth of Visa. Meanwhile, the first Bank of America card debit card was introduced in 1975. They were actually pretty late to the party considering that debit cards had been around since 1966. Visa also joined the PLUS ATM network in 1986. This allowed consumers to always access their cash 24 hours a day easily around the world. In 1986, Visa also developed multiple currency clearing and settlements with 21 currencies. This was a big change for travel. People could now travel from country to country and use their debit card or credit card in each of these countries. People no longer had to deal with exchanging currencies. However, they did have to deal with Visa's hefty fees. Nonetheless, these fees were often preferred over all the hassle required in the other method. By the late 1980s, Visa had grown into a huge corporation and they sponsored their first Olympic Games in 1988 in Seoul, South Korea. In 1989, they significantly increased security by implementing electronic signature capabilities. This was made possible by their acquisition of Interlinks. They further revamped security in 1993 by being the first to apply neutral network technologies to payments. This heavily reduced fraud. At this point, they were internationally established as a credit card and debit card issuer with great security implementation. As a result, it was time for them to go mainstream. In 1995, Visa introduced a Visa check card, which is basically the equivalent of writing a check but with greater security. In this same year, they also helped co-create EMV, which is a chip card specification. EMV ensures interoperability between all chip-enabled cards and terminals. In 1996, Visa's first international financial literacy program launches. Today, this program is offered in over 20 countries and helps millions of people every single year manage their money. Then, soon enough, 1997 rolled around, which is a huge year for Visa. 
This year, Visa's total payment volume reaches $1 trillion in just a single year. And then, in 2001, Visa reaches a total of 1 billion issued cards. This year, they also launched a zero liability program which protects cardholders from liability of fraudulent charges. And then, in 2004, their total debit volume surpasses their total credit volume. They also introduced advanced authorization which analyzes and assigns each piece of transaction a risk score in real time. At this point, Visa was really a global conglomeration but they were still separated. However, this wouldn't last for much longer. On October 11, 2006, Visa announced the merging of their businesses. Visa Canada, Visa International, and Visa USA were joined to create Visa Inc. Visa Europe would become a separate company owned by the issuer banks, and the issuer banks would also have a minority stake in Visa Inc. This process went pretty smoothly, and by the end of 2007, the corporate restructuring was all over. And at this point, Visa was ready to go public. On March 18, 2018, Visa went public with half of their shares. They sold 406 million shares at $44 a share, and this was too less over the expected price range of $37 to $42. So clearly, Visa was off to a great start. They actually ended up raising $17.9 billion, which is the largest initial public offering in US history. The stock has consistently increased over the past decade, and now a single share costs over $160. Now, that's already a tremendous increase, but when you consider they already did a class A 4 to 1 split, that increase becomes exponentially bigger. They have grown to almost 10 times their initial public offering. But despite all of this vast success, they never became a cocky company. They were always an ever adapting company. In 2008, they launched the Visa mobile payments platform which really accelerated mobile payments. In 2014, they introduced Visa Checkout, which is a much more easy and secure way to pay for stuff online. And finally, in 2016, Visa Inc. and Visa Europe reunited as one global company. They are very excited about the future and think that mobile payments will take over as the primary way to pay by 2020. And that is how the Visa that we know today was created. In the end, Visa is a global payments technology company that enables consumers, businesses, banks, and governments to pay each other using digital transactions. Visa truly has revolutionized payments over the last 50 years and they continue to do so by strongly supporting technology such as Apple Pay and Google Play. They are a Fortune 500 company and bring in billions of dollars of revenue every single year, which all makes sense when you consider the significant role they play in many of our day-to-day -day lives. But that's all I have for you guys on Visa. Make sure to comment down below what company you would like me to cover next. Also, if you guys like this video, then make sure to drop a like and consider subscribing if you want to see more videos just like this one. But until then, I'm Hari. I'll see you guys on the next one.